What's going on to all my Apple TV Plus fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new TV review and today we'll be breaking down the first three episodes of the brand new Apple TV Plus original sci-fi drama by the name of Invasion which will be dropping its first three episodes on the platform this Friday. Now I got the opportunity to check it out early and I'm really excited to let you all know what I thought about this series and in particular the first three episodes. Do I recommend you all check it out and will I be back to watch and review this on the week to week basis? We're breaking it all down here in this the free review but before we dive into it all make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts if you all are new to this channel well welcome to the community consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when i drop new content if you all enjoyed this spoiler free review of the first three episodes of invasion well make sure to like and share the review it helps out the channel a lot but also appreciate the support and in those comments let me know if this is a show that was on your radar and if you were excited for it but more importantly once you've seen the first three episodes What'd you think about it? Let's talk about your pros, your cons, your thoughts on the three or multiple different perspectives of this similar situation going around the globe. Which one did you find more appealing? Which character are you more invested in? What are some things that don't work for you? Are you excited for this series? Did you find it a little bit boring? Let's talk about it all in the comments below. So going into this new series on Apple TV Plus Invasion, I was pretty excited because if you all do not know, I champion the hell out of Apple TV+, Plus, whether it be C, Servant, Ted Lasso, this new sci-fi that I've been watching and reviewing on a week-to-week -week basis by the name of Foundation. I am an Apple TV Plus fan, and I think that they, of course, they don't have the same quantity of a Netflix, a Hulu, an Amazon, uh, you know, an HBO Max but they have the quality, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm always looking forward to some new content. So I was really excited for that. I really enjoyed the talent in front of the camera, but I will admit there was one thing that made me a little bit nervous about going to this series, and it's the showrunner, it's the creator of this show, it is Simon Kimberg, who, listen, I'm going to say it right now, he has some incredible projects under his name. He's a writer, he's a producer, he's a director, which he isn't all that great of, but we'll talk about that a little bit later, but he, he does it all, ladies and gentlemen. And he has, like, seriously, look up his filmography, he has been a part of some incredible sci-fi movies, sci-fi shows, superhero movies. He, he's a great, talented, individual, creative mind. But also, he has some pretty big stinkers. I mean, as I mentioned, some sci-fi stuff I don't like by him, the X-Men stuff that he's been a part of, the highs and the lows. He, he's a very interesting creative person, but I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit on the fence about Simon Kimberg directing or being a part of this project. So with all that being said, what I think about the first three episodes, we're going to dive into it here. And I just want to let you all know, this is a spoiler-free review. I'm going to briefly talk about the plot a little bit in the first three episodes, but more importantly, I'm going to focus on what worked, what didn't work, and do I recommend you all check it out. So with that being said, let's get into this review, starting off with episode one. And I'm not going to lie, ladies and gentlemen, episode one was a little bit uninteresting, I was a little bit bored by it uh, because essentially the first episode, which I always applaud a show, not necessarily, this is an, it's called Invasion. So you would expect there's aliens, there's explosions, there's this world hopping situation going on. We're going to be fighting aliens. That's not really the focus on the show so far, and particularly in this first episode. We're really meeting the main characters and seeing this kind of what is going on in their lives. And, and what I like about that idea, execution wasn't all that great, but what I like about the idea is we need to know who we're rooting for. We need to know these characters, what is going on in their lives. As we meet the three main characters, starting off with one of my favorite actors, Sam Neill, who Jurassic Park is my favorite film of all time, and I'm a big Sam Neill fan as it is, but we, in we introduce him. He's playing the sheriff of this small town. He goes by the name of John Bell Tyson, and he is retiring, and he really doesn't feel like he's done the best that he could in his position. He, he almost feels like his life has been purposeless. He wants to have a purpose in his life. So we're seeing Sam Neill. There's... Obviously, again, it's an invasion. We don't see, no spoilers, but we don't really see like aliens in the first episode, but there is a sense that there's something going on around the world, especially in his small town. So we get a little bit of insight of what's going on with him. And he wants to try to figure out what's going on, what happened to a particular group of people in, the, in my town, and how can I solve this crime? So he had a little bit of an interesting story. Out of the three main characters, his story was the most interesting, which brings me to our second character, Anisha, played by Oshifta Farahani. Now, Anisha Anisha is a mother and a wife, and you're just seeing the basic domestic life. She has some uh, marital issues. I'll just leave it at that. And, and she has a... It's The only thing I really found interesting about Anisha's story in that first episode is there's something... She has two kids, and, and what happens with this invasion, there's something that happens with a bunch of kids in school. And she has one of her kids, their, their nose are bleeding, they're freaking out, but one of her kids 
doesn't have a nosebleed, which is really important for the second episode. But I thought that her situation, her marital issues was was okay, but I wasn't all that invested because I don't really know who these characters are quite yet. But she has some interesting things going on. But that brings me to the third main character of this episode. Diary. Suna as Masuki. J uh, Masuki works for the JASA, which is essentially CNSA, which is like the NASA program in China. And she is someone that's very smart, very intelligent. She is a part of getting this group of astronauts into space. And she has a particular relationship with one of the astronauts. And, and, and it's a really interesting relationship. It's a, it's a quiet hush-hush relationship. And it adds a, kind of, a, again, a, a drama element to that particular character. So as characters go, like I said, Sam Neill was the most interesting. I like what Anisha's, like, her son element had to do with connecting to the invasion and, again, uh, the, all the stuff with the spacecraft. But, again, a lot of that stuff was just a little bit, I just wasn't connecting to the story. I thought that the pacing wasn't all the way there. But as a great premiere, as a first episode does, they have the hook, right? So in the last 10 minutes or so, the story kind of picks up a little bit where we see the invasion and how it affects all these three different characters that we meet. And, and the thing that I found to be interesting is these are three different stories, three different characters, diverse characters. We're going to Tokyo. We're going to different parts of the U.S. And that's what I kind of liked about, okay, we're not just focusing on one character. We're focusing on different characters, having their personal lives and how this is going to affect their lives with this invasion. So that was kind of like, okay, I didn't like... 40% or like the first 45 minutes of the of this, you know, 55 minute episode, but the 10 minutes was like, okay, there's enough there for make to make me intrigued to see what episode two has to offer. So that brings me to episode two, which essentially we're doing the same song and dance in the, uh, the second episode, but we're introduced to a couple different uh, new characters to the bunch. One, there is a, first off, we have the aftermath of what happens to a spacecraft, which makes things, which affects one of our main characters from the first episode. But we also meet two new characters. One is a, a young boy who's in London. He has a medical issue. He's being picked on in school and his, his uh, school is going on this trip, which causes a bit of an issue because again, there's an alien invasion and and you can only imagine what happens with kids on a bus and there's the end of the world coming up. So we meet him. We also meet a soldier who is in Iraq. Again, we're, we're going around the globe. And I, and I love that element about the show so far. We meet this character by the name of Bonte Ward. And he seems to be someone that is a leader. He's a fighter, but he's always on the go. So he seems to have a rift with his family. So again, they're building stakes. They're building emotion. He's someone that isn't too personally connected to his family. So you're going to imagine that he's want to go want to go home to save his family, you know, a la Independence Day of a certain extent, right? So going back to my thoughts of episode two, I have to say I prefer this episode more than the first because things kind of pick up a little bit sooner, pick up a little bit more quicker in the episode. Except for 45 minutes to wait till something happens, it takes about 25 minutes for something to happen, which again, the big kind of event in this episode is kids on a bus, alien invasion, you can only imagine the, the, the tension and the drama and you want the kids to be safe. We have a soldier that goes on a mission, his men are missing and he gets kind of connected to the alien situation. And again, going back to our two main characters from episode one, Anisha and her family and, and the astronaut situation, we kind of see more of the drama drama with Anisha and her family, as well as the astronaut, how that affected our main character in that narrative there. So I definitely have to say it, it, it it's better in the narrative. The pacing was stronger. I do prefer the second episode over the first, and I actually prefer the second episode over the third. And I thought, narratively speaking, it was the strongest out of the three. And again, it does something at the end of episode two, which makes you want to come back to wrap up the third episode, which I'm not going to lie, ladies and gentlemen, I don't really have that many notes for episode three, because I'm going to say it right now. Episode three is what I feared about this show, and that is Simon Kingbird and him just not having a grip on who's the target audience. At this point of episode three, again, I don't have a lot of notes here. It wasn't a lot going on. We have the same shtick with the family and them just going on the road and, and trying to figure what's going on with the world. And they pull a very dickish move. And I like, I kind of care for the mom, Anisha and her kids, but then they do, and the kids that had anything to do with the decisions that she makes. But when you see the third episode, they do something where I'm like, that was a very, like I said, a dickish move. So I'm like, I don't really care for Alicia anymore. We have the JSA character who is kind of doing the same thing she's been doing in the first two episodes. And Sam Neill, 
where is Sam Neill? I, he's not in episode two. He's not in episode three. And then it's just like, it, it feels pointless. It feels like this this show has, and, and it show, shows in this third episode, it's a lack of development. There's a lack of interest. And I just don't know, again, who is the target audience? We have a kid's narrative where it's like these kids are like surviving on the edge of this cliff and they're fighting each other and who's going to survive and who's the leader of the group. There's a bully that's just like kind of like a stereotypical bully. We have Anisha's family, which is just, what's the situation? Who really cares about this domestic situation, this marriage they have at hand? Uh, we have the astronaut, which she's trying to discover what happened to the astronauts in space, or I should say the, the woman that works uh, on the on the home base. She's trying to figure out what's going on there. But it's really boring. I hate to be so generic and describing it that way, but it's a really boring show, especially in that third episode. Again, episode two, I'm like, this is interesting. We're seeing an alien invasion, which, by the way, there's literally, not to spoil anything, we don't see any aliens, but you see the inklings of an invasion taking place. Again, we see in episode one at, at Sam Neill's uh, hometown where there's a bunch of birds going on. We see in the Nisha's house, there's like an electrical uh, outage that goes on. And we see in space, there's something that happens there. And, and there's elements of like, okay, shit's going to hit the fan. But there's no aliens in the first three episodes. We see ships, we see like these little figures, but you don't really see what they look like. So that's not the focus on the show, which I'm okay with that the show is not necessarily focused on aliens and action and all the science fiction that I love, but I, I'm okay with focusing on character and character development but the show doesn't have that. It doesn't have any development. The stories that they're giving us isn't that compelling, and I just do not care, which brings me to my last point. I don't think I'm going to be watching this show after that third episode, man. There's not enough meat on the bone to keep me intrigued. Again, each episode had like the final five minutes, 10 minutes, like, oh, that's interesting, but what about the other 40, 45, 50 minutes that I just kind of dragged along to get to this point? There's not enough there for me personally. I, I, I'm probably going to watch the fourth episode just to see if things kind of turn on its head, if the action picks up, the sci-fi picks up. But based on these three episodes, there's not a lot of left, uh, enough meat there for me to kind of look forward to watching this and reviewing this for you all. But that's just my thoughts on the first three episodes. Let me know yours in the comments. I don't think it's worth your time, but I would love to know if you think it is something that you would be invested in in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on the first, second, third episode, your pros, your cons, your thoughts on the writing, the performances, which by the way, I thought the performances were fine, but no one really stood out to me. And I thought that the writing was just very surface level and very you know, bland, if I'm being honest. But again, we talked about that in the review, but let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you stuck around to this point in the video, I appreciate every single one of you all. I, I do wish that this was a show that I was really invested in, but it's just not hitting it for me. But hey, that's just my thoughts. But again, if you stuck around to this point in the video, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hit that bell. That way you don't miss any of my content. Hope you all enjoyed this review. Hope you're staying safe. As you can see on the screen now, subscribe to my channel, check out my other content, and we'll see you on the next video.